again. Welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. Well, we're in February. We survived January and actually really wasn't that bad. Winter-wise. I've never, I've been in New Hampshire now for 12 years almost, yeah. and I don't think I've had a green winter this yeah. long, ever. It, it, that makes about sense, because if I think back, there was one winter, and it would have been probably 12, 13 years ago, that was super mild. Like, See, it's probably something with El Nino or like one of those big something. bodies of um, air. But it's knock on wood, I figure if, if if we're starting February without two feet of snow on my front lawn. I kind of feel like I whatever, feel like whatever, whatever winter throws Like even if us. it dumps yeah. it, I always have this, you know, I always say, well, spring's just about here. And everybody goes, you're crazy. And I'm like, well, February's such she, a... She, she just said that before we um, switched on the show. And she's like, spring's here. Well, I mean, I'm like, well... You know, it's the 4th of February. So we're all like halfway through February, right? And then February's just <laughs> such a short little month that you might as well not even count February. So that puts you into March. And usually by St. Patrick's Day, even if there is snow on that time, it's usually gone through a mild spell. Yes. Because the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Manchester doesn't usually have snow. So I always use that as like a thing. Oh, okay. And then I, yeah. And then That's, it's April. It might as well just be summer. Right. right? So. And I'm going to be gone for Mexico. I'm, I'm speaking at a conference in Mexico uh, in Acapulco. Yeah, so, just don't um, touch any people. Or you bring lots of hand sanitizer and be careful because there's that coronavirus thing. Yeah, which is coming from China. So, I know, you but know, I'm just saying. Big no, geographic no, I, I was surprised to see I, one of the one of the many, 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 many things we watched about uh, the coronavirus was uh, how many people travel from China to Canada. It's like a crazy oh, high number. Yeah, Where you're I like, mean, really? Well, no, because, I mean, in some ways, uh, uh, China has been mm. colonizing yeah. the entire world yeah. through, ironically, capitalism. Yeah, yep, so yep. it's been So uh, it's just one of those things. If you're traveling anywhere, I have a friend that's in Brazil right now, and I said, okay, just bring lots of hand sanitizer. Wash your hands a lot. That's one of the best things you can do. I, I'm a little paranoid, but we're watching, you know. And uh, we just got through Liberty Forum yeah, this that weekend. Went well. It went no snow. So no anybody snow. who was traveling to New Hampshire to see how bad winter can be was fooled. And <laughs> and I have to say, really enjoyed uh, Kyle Mann. Is he the, the Babylon the Bee guy? Babylon yeah. Bee. So Babylon Bee, it's a satire site, sort of similar to the Onion. Yeah, yeah. Um, sort of a Christian satire, so very clean, yeah. I would say, compared to a lot of stuff, but also, you know, funny, because yeah. if you're... Well, it is you know, kind of, when you see fun, some of these things, it's, it is it is the thing usually that your brain's kind of thinking, and then they make a, a you know a fake headline out of it. Right, so um, so he gave a great, you know, closing speech, and nice. um, and I guess it was the Super Bowl on Sunday. Yeah, there Sunday. was sports ball on know, Sunday, you know. Something I totally Kansas missed. City won, apparently, I mean, after 50 years. I found a meme, uh, you know, how in your memories on Facebook, my meme was uh, the old dame from uh, Downton Abbey, yeah. and she was like, the Super Bowl, is it Wedgwood? <laughs> <laughs> well, I laugh, on Monday I went to get my coffee up at Cumberland Farms, and I said, okay, so the sports ball's over, and they pretty much wrapped up the impeachment hearing, because they said they, weren't, they voted to not have more witnesses on Friday. So I'm like, oh my God, what are people going to get get up out of bed and do? If, right. You know, no, no sports ball, no impeachment. Um, well, it's almost like the coronavirus showed up as if someone has a, a World story. Health Organization yeah. content I, calendar well, that says, I do think it must that, be time for SARS or, you know, what was the pig one and, yeah, and swine, you know, swine flu yeah, yeah. and whatever. You know, it just seems like. Every it's year, this we're, time of year, someone just, gets alarmed we're about just some watching disease. the. Um, it'll be interesting. It's just interesting to watch the whole coronavirus. It, it, it is predominantly. I'm waiting for the Pepsi virus, personally. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what are people to do in New Hampshire now that all these important <gasps> things? Oh wait, a week from today we have the New Hampshire primary. primary. So, starting this morning, I presume, and for the next seven days. Every place you go, especially if you live in, in, you know, in places like Manchester or Nashua, where there's a lot, a large population, everywhere you go, expect to see um, Democratic candidate staff or, and or Democratic candidates for president because it's In fact, I think uh, Pete Buttig 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 Buttigieg. Okay. Pete is Mayor having, Pete. Mayor Pete is having a uh, town hall right now at the Rex, I there believe, just down the street um, here in Manchester. So, so for those of you who may be, I, had to, I did some Googling this morning because I woke up because I didn't really. We don't know we who, don't won, know who won, right? won the Iowa caucus. And 
I went up and I'm like, did I miss something? Where are the? And I asked some people, you know, who are who know how this all works, and they're like, yeah, the fact that there's no numbers out is, um, I think the word they used was malpractice because. I want y'all. Well, to I guess the machine didn't oh, there work are, or no, the app. It, it, I yeah. heard like so NPR said reality, something about the, the software. You should, oh, your biggest takeaway um, from the Iowa caucus should probably be that the Democratic Party that would like to have more control over your lives, run your health care, and spend your money on your behalf can't count votes. Yes. Like literally, that's all this is is counting votes. So I did a little background because I wasn't one hundred percent sure. Um, the way it works, the way it works in Iowa is nothing like what happens here next Tuesday no. in the first in, in the nation primary. A caucus is completely different. What happens is registered Democrats or undeclared voters who um, switch to Democrat yesterday, they go to um, a caucus precinct, which there's like 1,800 or some crazy. There's like close to 2,000 precincts across the state of Iowa, um, including. 87 satellite locations, including one in um, the Republic of Georgia. Don't even want to go down why there's precincts <laughs> outside of the country, but whatever. There's like these 1,800 precincts. So your little neighborhood, basically, small, um, where these caucus goers go and pitches at 7 o'clock at night on Monday. And then they uh, the different candidate representatives um, make pitches to this group of people, which might only be 90 caucus goers or it might be 150 depending on you know where it is and then literally all the people move to the corner of the room that their candidate is representative so it's not a secret ballot or anything it is literally you're standing up and saying i'm supporting x and you know you're saying i'm supporting x and they go and they count now there's a threshold limit i guess and i don't remember i had it here somewhere i think it was 15.5 percent or some craziness um if your candidate falls below the threshold on the first round of counts, then those caucus goers that were with that get unqualified to get to move to a different mm. group of people. But the people who are already in that, the qualifying candidates group can't move. Okay. So once you're in somebody who's doing okay, you can't, you're locked in. Okay. Um, and then they count. And there's like this crazy form. I looked online and I'm like, it's got math, and they got to multiply by eight, and then add 16. Yeah, I'm like, what? That's just crazy. First of all, I don't know why it has to be so complicated, but okay. Um, yeah. I'm sure there's a reason that there's probably some had math. to do with someone being all kinds right. of corrupt 100 so years ago and it trying was to interesting that this some angle. So they count all these votes, and then just to make it more complicated and less secure, uh, the Democratic Party in Iowa thought that the best way for the results to be transmitted was through a phone app. Right. Because nobody ever <laughs> screws with phone apps, right? That, you know, whatever. Well, I actually say kudos to them. I wish it had worked well. well because how I would think you it know was... if it was a phone app? If it were, you know, because you, I'm Look, pretty sure there people are, in your I know house people and people in my house say all the time, it. oh, the tech, you know, it's oh, going I'm, to be, cra you know, I'm like, look, I'm okay I, with... I almost trust tech better than like people. most people. Well, and I think, so. I think I'd be okay with tech as long as it was recounted on paper, just like in New Hampshire. Oh, yeah, for so sure. A, so something happened. I don't know what. A bunch of people voted. Well, what happened was Bernie won and the establishment yeah, doesn't so like I, that. That's I exactly what happened. <laughs> based on, um, and keep in mind, all the candidates are going to come out on the Iowa caucus night and say, Iowa's chosen and made right. a statement, and this, which Buttigieg did late. Late, late last, last night, night, beyond the news cycle, which yeah, was like stupid. Yeah, like 12.30 in so the like, morning. So, like, nobody's watching that. at 12.30 in the morning. You wasted your opportunity to get coverage on the news. Or he was taking a big fat chance because it was like, well, there's no winner. So, so if I, I make an announcement, maybe on, we could fool um, some there was, people. There's various, various um, re news reports out, none of them from the Democratic Party, ironically, um, because <laughs> I think they're, they're scurrying to figure out how they can spin this or something. Um, Sanders probably won with about 29%, um, following by Mayor Pete um, at about 25%, Elizabeth Warren down at about 21, and then Joe Biden in fourth place at 12. So I think the big takeaway, other than the fact that the Democrats apparently struggled with math and technology <laughs> and pretty much everything and should and not should be trusted not run with anything, anything um, is that Joe Biden did not even place in the top three, so that's weird. 
um, that Mayor Pete did um, come out ahead of Elizabeth Warren. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't really bode well for Elizabeth Warren. I mean, it's all just, there, and then they all get on planes and come to New Hampshire for the right. next seven days. So some, I had some. Um, and I know, you know, I, mean, I know people are, are generally super excited that we have first in the yeah. nation and all of that. I'm sort of ambivalent about it myself personally, but you know, fine. But you know, how accurate are these things well, anyway? I mean, it's so all, I think the you know, Iowa caucus has picked like seven out of the past nine. Oh yeah, it, it is. Uh, New Hampshire is, n I don't even think our hit I, rate is that Here's what close. I would think the, the Iowa caucus and the New Hampshire primary do, and this is why I do think these are both important, even though apparently the Democrats can't count. Um, you've got, you know, in the Democratic primary, so I don't have a horse in that race, you know, I'd like it to be some crazy person, which it probably will be. But, I mean, the lineup um, is, it's hard it's, to it's really real discern between them. Which, They're all right. so, so close in terms happens, of how much money they want to steal Somebody from asked us. me this morning, we were talking about the results, and they said, well, what, how come we don't know how Tulsi did? And I said, well, here's, having worked on a presidential campaign and been around long enough and talked about, you know, all this stuff, here's how it works. When you're a candidate going into run for president, I mean, you've got the Bloombergs who have tons of money. He's never Bloomberg. Oh, will, he's what? He's gonna wait till super. He's gonna wait till Super Tuesday because mm -hmm. he does not have a ground game. Same with Tom, whatever his name is. Steyer, they yep. do not have a ground game. They are depending on their Here, money. Here's what. Yeah, that's what right? they have. They think so they can buy it. But you know what's interesting? There isn't an actual correlation between the highest spenders and no, the winners. No, but I'm just saying. But so you start with a pool of 24 random people. Some of them are senators. Some of them are mayors. You know, all stuff. And it weans down over time. So what what you'll see in Iowa, you'll see candidates will pick. I know. Um, I don't think I don't have any inside knowledge, but I'm going to presume that Tulsi did not have anything. She's all in in New Hampshire. Oh, maybe. I mean, she's That's been here why, a right. long time. She has and, been yeah. putting all of her efforts because she has a limited pool of resources mm -hmm. into New Hampshire and getting legs in New Hampshire. Uh, Joe Biden, does not have a ground game in um, Iowa. That's clear. I mean, we could just end with game. <laughs> Joe Biden does, does not no have game. But I mean, <laughs> but we, it'll be interesting to see how poorly he does in New Hampshire, right? Because, but but I could but, see him almost doing well amongst like the, the older, mo the moderate voters, right. and, you know. And 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 they have limited choices. I mean, you've got Elizabeth Warren, who, by the way, if you miss this t this clip said at a town hall that when she's president, her education secretary would be picked by a transgender nine-year-old. What? Her <laughs> words, out of her own mouth. That's a That's quote? what she said, that a <laughs> nine-year-old transgender child will pick her education secretary. Wow. Oh. So you got that person, <laughs> and then you've got Bernie, who's just a socialist, and 80. Just saying. And, you know, like, so you've got. I mean, the sad part for me with Bernie is I think much like Ron Paul yes. represented <laughs> uh, a, a certain a viewpoint. Um, you know, and I was a Ron Paul no, girl, definitely. Too. You know, like, I liked what he had to say. Mm -hmm. He was explaining monetary policy yep. in a way that yep. people could possibly grasp. You know, the government does a lot of bad things that make us poorer and yep. poorer and poorer over time. And then they pretend, oh, we have this problem. We should come in and solve it. Maybe you should stop causing right. the problems that you then Please claim to have to stuff. come and solve for us, right? But, you know, so I think Bernie draws a lot of support from, uh, you know, from, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but the ignorant masses, yes. right? The people who are genuinely good people who are like, of course we want to help people. Of course we want to do these things. But nobody. So they hear that clarion call of, I want to be a good person and I want socialism. But you don't really want socialism, folks, and you don't want Bernie because what socialism will give you is death and destruction right. over time. That is a historical fact that can be proven. And, you know, so if you're a, like a good person who genuinely is like, I want to help other people, you need to start looking at free market yeah. solutions. Yeah. You need to start looking at the candidates who want to make government as small as humanly possible so that we can allow people to help each other. The institution of the government 
It's to protect is, your rights, not to infringe on my rights. Well, well, it's <laughs> to protect your rights, not to infringe on your rights. But the institution of government at this stage just redistributes money, yes. which means it can never be good no. because it's just taking from one group of people and giving to another, which means em eventually we just have this pool well, of people who are all funny. upset. So somebody uh, close to Dan and I um, from another state is a huge Bernie supporter. A lot this, of my friends. This are. person is an intelligent person. You know, college graduate, um, works in the tech field, makes major money, very smart. And I struggle because I'm like, but how can he think that this is going to work? Like, and he lives very comfortably, lives in a very nice home in a very part, very nice town, drive, you know, has all these things. But in his mind, Dan was explaining to me, he goes, he thinks everybody else it's, will be brought up yes. to his level. And I'm like, but that can't even work. That's just like, to me, that, you don't have to be really deep to figure out that that can't work. Well, that can work if you do if it you with build markets, real, right. right? So you but the can, government the one is aspirational. So, so if that guy yes. is a socialist and he thinks we're gonna take yes. the poor people and get them here, that's not how socialism no. works. So how socialism works is this guy here Comes is down. gonna get dragged down to yeah, here. So, it's so socialism goes to the lowest common denominator and makes things crappy for everyone. And free markets makes things aspirational. So everyone starts to go, I wanna go up. Yep. Just your so, little econ 101 so you've got, today, right. guys. So you've got, <laughs> um, Presuming it comes out of Iowa, Bernie, who did I say? I'm a, Bernie Pete Warren. Warren. I mean, so Elizabeth Warren, I'm sorry, nuts, crazy nuts. Bernie old. Who do you think is the establishment pick? It's Biden, Joe, Joe right? Biden. Okay. Um, which Who's would be also fun, ancient. Which, as a Republican, bring on Joe Biden. I'll gladly spend the next nine months talking about his kid and the corruption in Ukraine. Come on, let's, right. we talked about it for the past year. <laughs> let's talk about it for nine more months. Um, so it'll be interesting candidates out of Iowa, you know, Pete, if Pete did come in second, that gives him some leverage. Um, now, how he does in New Hampshire, that also tells things. Now, Biden, they say, probably has more support in South Carolina because they're going to probably be more moderate, right? Yeah, that makes so sense. So that's the next step. So, yep. so if Biden's in fourth and then Biden's in fourth and Biden comes in and wins South Carolina mm -hmm. or comes in second, oh, now he's back in the game. You know, and what if Bernie's numbers in South Carolina, what if he comes in fourth or fifth? You know, like, well, it starts to level out, and the ones with money are waiting for Super Tuesday. The ones without money, which is most, you know, which is usually the bulk of the candidates that are still in the game, are usually all in in one or two places to try to shift the attention a little. I mean, I would also love to just, in some ways, like, I'm kind of like, oh, maybe if Bloomberg gets in, that could be really interesting because now we've got, like, billionaire to billionaire. billionaire. So suddenly well, you take away is, that narrative of, I thought all billionaires were evil bad. and we've got to right. steal all their money and then run but, the government for nine months and then be more bankrupt. Two Democrat billionaires are in the race and right. the Democrats aren't ousting them. So, like, I don't understand. Why is orange man bad? Uh, Orange man bad. You know that's really what it comes down to. It doesn't matter. It's Trump. He's bad. You know everybody. Everything's Trump's fault. He's he owned. I don't know. <laughs> Speaking of Trump, there's a rally here on Monday because that'll yes. add to the you know congestion <laughs> in downtown Manchester. Um, I did think Dan and I have decided we are going to go. Oh, you are. Yeah. Yep. I, I, I I'm traveling. One. I'll be on my way um, to Mexico. Yeah, you'll be going to Sun. So since I'm Yay. not going to Mexico, I think I will go to the Trump rally. Um, and, we have uh, friends that are going again and. And, right. and we would be remiss not to mention anyone who would like to support Free Ross. Uh, they'll be doing it. They'll some be doing a, some kind of rally uh, outside rally or whatever. Um, and, and then, do you know if they've set up the the, the, the media trucks well, there's, and the whole thing? I was reading. There's a whole bunch. Of, if you're going anywhere's in downtown Manchester, and if you're not on the Nixle alerts, I, there are going to be a lot of different closures. Mm -hmm. um, the, the the plaza in front of the DoubleTree is traditionally where I think the major networks set up right. on the lawn. Yeah, I remember um, my first year and, and just looking and it was like, it looked like the, a, you yes. know, a scene out of a, 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 a you know, some cool politic movie it, or um, something. They will close uh, for Monday when the president and the vice president, I believe, will be here. They will obviously close the streets all the way around the SNU arena. Um, they're talking about, there's discretion of the networks, which personally I do not think uh, street closures should be at the discretion of anybody other than 
the government maybe. <laughs> I'm saying, why are the networks going to decide if they need to close a street? What? They don't, yeah, what? that's weird. Unless they're paying the city of Manchester huge money, and then I guess we can let them do that. But anyways, um, streets around, like the annex off the city hall, that little pass-through in the parking lot on the side street, that'll all be closed. Partially because the city clerk's office obviously needs to have right. space to get in and out on election day, which is next Tuesday. Um, so just be careful, be aware. Don't all of I, I laugh when I see people go, I don't know what's going on. I couldn't go down Elm Street on the day before the primary. And you're like, you know, there's a like there's presidential be, thing going. If you don't know, there'll be, yeah, just to basically just, just check and check online, you know, ask your friends, you know, find out. There'll definitely be yeah. road closures um, and all of that good stuff. So. And then the primary is next Tuesday. The primary is next Tuesday. Know. So that it'll be interesting. We don't do this bizarre thing where we all stand in corners and count each other and move to other <laughs> things, although it would be kind of fun. Um, and uh, here in Manchester specifically, um, the city clerk's office does a really good job of um, coming up with the results fairly quick. So I would imagine we'll have some results um, out of New Hampshire. Not that Manchester they is. They do a the good job unless they don't, well, having no. been in a recount. Right. No, but I mean, they, they usually can give us non unofficial, unofficial results, right. usually by 9, 10. I mean, it might be longer because there's going to be a lot of ballots, you yeah. know, on the Democrat side. I don't know how many. I mean, I'm really curious. I think Bernie's going to take New, New Hampshire. Hampshire. He um, did last time, didn't he? I don't know. He oh, did. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I think he did. I, um, you know, I haven't really been paying that close attention. It's interesting because, like, talking about who's in, who's playing and what, you know, Andrew Yang, I don't think he'll come in the top four, but um, Andrew Yang has had an office here in Manchester all along, so, right. like, he'll probably do better in New Hampshire than he did in Iowa, maybe. Uh, Tulsi, I would think, would do better in New Hampshire, just based on our political persuasion, than... Um, she probably will do in Iowa, and who knows? Maybe we'll have the results from Iowa by the, by the time we get the results from New Hampshire. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how Elizabeth Warren does, does because she's really. I mean, we keep seeing. You know, I see the canvassers. I assume the ones with the light blue hats and scarves are the Elizabeth Warren people because she's got that on her sign. Um, we see them all the time. I'm like, get away from me. Um, <laughs> but it'll be interesting to see if she can. I mean, she's from Massachusetts, which I guess could work for or against her. Um, it's just going to be. I, I I find it like civically just interesting. Right. Just to kind of figure out what the strategies are. So, and what. so schools are closed next week. Schools are Tuesday. closed next Tuesday, um, which I think is crazy, but whatever. Um, two, two wards in Manchester. Ward 8 nor votes at Memorial High School. They will not be voting in the same place in the high school. They're going to be voting in the gymnasium instead of wherever they normally vote. Uh, I think they go vote in the cafeteria normally. And Ward 2, which is Hillside Middle School, if I'm not mistaken, will also be voting in uh, in the gymnasium versus their, their other room um, because they just expect so many people and they need to have a better flow or whatever. Um, I'm glad that in February I don't have to be outdoors holding signs, so yes. I'm happy about that. <laughs> I will go and vote. Um, I mean... I don't really think there's any contest in the Republican presidential primary, no. um, but I will go and vote just so I can stay at that five out of four out of four. <laughs> um, so, so what else? Um, we were going to talk about we the were going to talk Manchester about Manchester Proud, 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 but maybe we should um, I do want to remind people though that they have this pretty heart logo on signs all over the place on February 20th at 6 p.m. at Memorial High School. Manchester Proud is making their presentation. Um, keep in mind, Manchester Proud is a completely private organization, has nothing connected to actual, supposedly has nothing connected to our actual school district or school board, um, although I think it's kind of weird and nefarious. Oh, I'm going to totally mimic this structure. Just start just to, something, well, I mean, have a couple of meetings in libraries, and then right. say, here's the here's plan. Here's the plan. Well, <laughs> I did look, and I didn't print that part out, but I was looking at, like, well, who's on this group, right? So... When I think of education, and I might not be thinking of education the same way some of these people are thinking of education, but why isn't Kate Baker on that? She is like, why isn't Frank Edelblue part of this? Why are not the people who have some ideas about how we can improve education for kids involved? Oh, I, I, I mean, I definitely think there's a slant, yes. but I also do think that there is a genuine appetite oh, for people to try I and do. come up with some solutions. So, I mean, um, they were talking about... You know, so they're using phrases like yeah, yeah. magnet school yeah. instead of charter school, yeah. but really they kind of mean the same thing. Like, there, it does sound it does like there's sound an like appetite there's a, yes. for some change. Um, and what we know and what we've talked about a hundred times on this show is 
says, we cannot keep doing the status quo. <laughs> it is a failure and we need to try and do better things. And the solution isn't more money. The solution is like better, better ideas. Yeah, better ideas. Um, and, and, so that means you know, less centralization, more decentralization, more choice to everyone in the city so that your kids can learn the way your kids need to learn so that we are not graduating you know at a at a 40 well, percent and, reading when we, proficiency. and the ones that we are grad right um so february 20th 6 p.m memorial high school if you're interested in attending um, and then this saturday is, actually is, is free there's career a, day there's a free <laughs> courier day, but there's also a uh, The Truth About Socialism. Oh, where did I um, see that? Talk that is taking place. I think it's $10 for the tickets. It's uh, the Josiah Bartlett Center. Okay, which is over is, is in industrial. putting that on. I believe it's somewhere in the mill yards, but if you go to okay. Josiah Bartlett Center, you'll yep. find information. Yeah, that I thought it's going was interesting. To be a, you know, it's, it's actually experts on socialism. So if you're planning to vote for Bernie, please come to that first so that you can actually understand what you're voting instead for. of just hearing the clarion call of oh this sounds nice come find out what it really yep. is so that you can direct that passion and compassion to the right solutions not the wrong solutions and free second saturday at the courier because if you don't want to do politics you can do art yes how like about me. that um the State of the Union address is tonight, I believe. So um, there's a State of the Union watch party, I believe, at Murphy's, put on by I think the Young Republicans, but don't quote me. Maybe it's AFP. I don't really know. I don't um, remember, yeah. There's also a victory uh, primary night victory party that uh, Matt Mayberry, who's running for CD1, is hosting at Murphy's next Tuesday night. Nice. Um, if you want to come on by, if you're a Republican, come on by, meet some friends. Um, otherwise. Yay for February! We're almost done with the winter thing, and that's all I got. So we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.